Hi, I'm Nikolai aka 56 Miner, and today we're unboxing our September Basics box. This month's box is all about Sanguine. We'll go over the history of the art supply, talk about our materials, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up while working with them. Let's get into it! For our surface this month, we have a custom tone paper pad from the Fabriano Company. This medium tone pad is perfect for a variety of dry medium and will allow us to create some fun effects this month. Our next item is going to be a Sanguine Extra Large Artist Stick from the Credicolor Company. Sanguine has been a medium used by artists for centuries. The characteristic color from Sanguine comes from Iron Oxide, which is what gives us that nice red color. Now depending on how we hold our artist stick, we can create a variety of lines. And because of the qualities of our paper, we can achieve some nice textural elements with this art supply. By breaking our stick in half, we can get a nice rugged edge, which will allow us to have a little bit more character in our lines than with the machine cut sides. By adding a bit more variance to our lines, we can add a lot more life to whatever we're drawing. Sanguine lends itself naturally to sketches, life drawings, and more rustic scenes. One of my favorite uses for a sanguine stick is gesture drawing. Gesture drawing is when you try to simplify a subject into its basic shapes so you can get a better understanding of their relationship to one another. Let's grab the artist chamois included in this month's box and use it to take our gesture drawing a little bit further. So what's nice about a chamois in this paper is that we can actually ghost our lines back by just buffing them out. We can also use the chamois to blend areas or soften transitions by being able to ghost our drawing back we can refine our gesture drawing using the lines that we had laid down before as reference. I found that this takes a bit of the pressure off from working on figure drawing and it's a great way to conserve paper. Let's grab the triangle eraser from Karen Dosh, included in this month's box, and use it to clean up our sketch a little bit more. Using a light hand, I'm going to focus on the interior of our figure and then go back in with our sanguine stick and darken up the outside of our figure to reinforce that silhouette. This will help our subject stand out from the toned paper. Let's grab the last item in this month's box, the Kohenor Geoconda Charcoal Pencil Set. This set contains a wide variety of dry mediums from white chalk to traditional black charcoal. I've gone ahead and swatched out our materials and arranged them based on the value that they have due to their color. Because we're working on toned paper, that tone is going to have its own value, unlike traditional white paper, which will always be your brightest. Now I know that drawing a figure can be a bit intimidating, so this month I thought we'd do a still life of an apple. Now if you don't have an apple handy, you're more than welcome to take a screenshot of this and work along with me but I always suggest working from life if you have the opportunity. Taking our sanguine stick, I'll start to block in the general shape of our apple, working with really angular lines to help make sure my proportions are correct. From there, I'll establish the top of our apple and exaggerate the stem a bit, and add a few contour lines like we talked about in our July videos. Now that I have a good understanding of the form of our apple, I'll buff out some of those lines with our chamois and go in with our red chalk pencil to start to attribute form. The key to this stage is focusing just on areas of darker value, so anything that's a shadow or turning away from the light, and using a very light hand. We're applying just enough pressure for the tooth of that paper to pick up some of that chalk. A good general rule of thumb to keep in mind at this stage is that darker things typically push into the background or lighter things pull forward. Transitioning to our light sepia color, I'm gonna focus just on areas of shadow, so the very bottom of the apple and where the stem sticks out. Once I have those general values established, I'm gonna go back in with our sanguine stick and use it to add a bit more color and texture to our apple. This will help differentiate it from our paper in the background later. If you're looking for a bit more of a challenge this month, try taking some inspiration from this month's prompt, selfie, and do a self-portrait. Using our chamois, I'll smooth out some of that texture and go in with our sepia dark pencil to establish the cast shadow on that apple. 
We can always darken up our shadows later, so I'm going to start fairly light. And I'm going to use my finger to blend out that cast shadow, as it's going to give us a slightly different texture than the chamois. Moving on to the blacks in our pencil set, I'm going to use the charcoal on the left side of my apple to create a sense of depth. And I'm going to use a hatching technique with the silky black on the right in order to differentiate the light. For a more smoother transition, I'm going to use a hatching technique and then go in with our chamois in order to blend our charcoal out. Using our eraser to clean up any edges and to reinforce those highlights. Now, in order to achieve a really rich black, we will need to go in and layer that charcoal a few times. For our next step, we'll use the white charcoal to add some highlights. This will really push the apple into a more three-dimensional look. The trick with this, though, is to use those highlights sparingly. Adding too many highlights can flatten out your image and confuse the viewer. Now that we've established our brightest areas with those highlights, I'm going to go in with our sanguine stick and add a little bit more value and texture to our apple. As a final step, I'll go back in and reinforce the outline and a few of the darker areas of our apple. This will help to push the contrast now that we've kind of got more of the piece established. And this is why, again, I always suggest starting out with lighter values, because you can always go back in and darken them later. That's all for this month's video. Hope you enjoyed it, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxSeptember. We love seeing what y'all create each month. And if you want to share out any of our previous videos, head over to our YouTube channel, where you can like and subscribe. And I'll see you next month.